Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Welcome to the folks at home. Glad that you're joining us. Thank you to our bell choir for setting the tone for worship this morning, setting the tone for worship this morning. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Terrible. Thank you for the courtesy laugh. Um, but do, we do thank you for, the, for your music this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got just a couple things for you as we get going. Um, if you are a Thrivent member and have Thrivent Choice dollars coming your way, those expire at the end of the month. So if you've not yet designated those, um, you can get, go online and do that. Um, and if, if, I'm not saying you have to, if you designate them to St. Andrews for backpacks or youth or um, food pantry or you know whatever, um, if you have a specific designation, just let Doug know um, so he, he knows where to direct those dollars. Um, thank you for the Easter candy. Um, the box is overflowing, which is always great. Uh, we will have, I'm anticipating we will stuff about a thousand eggs this evening. So um, thank you so much for helping us get that candy together. Um, the Easter egg hunt will be next Sunday after worship, and it's for fifth grade and younger. Um, we are looking for mowers to help with the yard. So if you are interested in doing that, you can talk to Larry. He's right there. Um, get on the schedule for that. Um, and then notice that next week begins Holy Week. There's some information in the bulletin about the schedule and things that we're going to be doing. So next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we will gather in the atrium. Um, I understand the weather's not going to be great, but who knows what will happen between now and then. If we all pray for nice weather, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Um, but we'll meet in the atrium to get started next week and then process in here. I don't know why I'm turning the page. Everything's here in the front. Um, the, the final thing is um, today's the third Sunday of the month, and so we'll have prayer station. If you desire prayer for yourself or someone you know, you can meet me in the back, and I would be glad to pray with you. Please stand as you're able, and we will begin our worship. <clears throat> we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will, I will draw all people to myself. Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Let us pray for the cleansing of our hearts, confessing our sins to the one whose mercy is everlasting. Redeeming God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as we ought. We have strayed from your commandments. Do not remember our sins, but forgive our iniquities, that we may fix our eyes on you and sin no more, through Christ our Lord. <coughs> Sisters and brothers, by the faith of Christ your sins are forgiven. May you delight in the joy of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, the walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Sing you pour out all, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will stay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed 
Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you'll pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord, make sin and shame be Fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death 
we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another with the word of God's peace. The reading for this fifth Sunday in Lent comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me the first 12 verses of the 51st Psalm. Lord, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Plot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my sacred heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. God. 
gospel is from the 12th chapter of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. <clears throat> Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite the kids up for children's time. Good morning. How is everyone today? Good. Awesome. I see a lot of people are wearing green today. What? Okay. Is it hiding? Okay. We don't need to see it. It's okay. If it's hiding, it can stay hidden. Oh, it's the sock. Thanks, Mom. Well, if it's your socks, let's see your socks. Okay, that's all right. So why are we wearing green today? Why? Because if you don't wear green on St. Patrick's Day, then you'll get pinched by a leprechaun. That's right. That's exactly right. Or maybe somebody else, not just a leprechaun. It might be somebody else to give you a little pinch. So it's important, right? It's a fun tradition that everybody wears green on St. Patrick's Day. But what if I told you that to, today is not the only saint that we celebrate on St. Patrick's Day? There is another saint who is very important to some of us. And look, look what's on my sock. What is that? A it's not a leprechaun. It's a kitty. It's a kitty. It's not St. Kitty's Day, no. <laughs> it is not St. Kitty's Day. But today we remember a saint named Gertrude. And Gertrude was a nun, and she lived in a convent. That's where nuns live. They live kind of by themselves as, as a group. And there were lots of mice in the convent. And so she adopted two or three cats and had them come live with her, and they got rid of all the mice. So, and that's not the, they do like chasing mice. That's why she got the cats. That's exactly why she did it. But that's not why we remember her today. Because they're candles. They are candles. But the reason we remember St. Gertrude today is because later on, another, gosh, Six or seven hundred years later, after her, there was an overrun of mice in Europe. And they carried with them a really nasty disease. And people remembered that St. Gertrude had brought cats in to the convent to get rid of the mice. And so they started adopting cats and they killed all the mice and the sickness went away. 
about you? How about you? What about you? We don't want you to go away. We want you to stay here. Oh, Lexi's car went to the car wash. Okay. That's great. And it's clean now. Well, that's good. That's good. So just like St. Just like Gertrude and her cats cleaned out the convent? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, okay. And as we, we think about St. Patrick, too, what did St. Patrick do? He got kidnapped. No, he did not get kidnapped. No, I don't think so. St. Patrick drove out. No, he didn't drive away. He drove out the snakes. The Ireland was full of snakes, and he drove out all the snakes. And so because people were so happy about that, we remember him today. How about that? So that goes with your cleaning theme, right? So we clean, he cleaned out the snakes, and Gertrude cleaned out the mice, and Lexi cleaned her car. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So on St. Patrick's Day, we're going to remember St. Patrick, right? That's why we wear our green. But we're also going to remember St. Gertrude because she was really wonderful too, and she is the patron saint of cats. So who has cats at their house? Yeah? Does Zach have a cat? Yeah? The rest of you, are, are you all dog people? Yeah? Dogs are good too. Dogs are good too. So the patron... I heard. That's awesome. So the patron saint... That's a lot of bunnies. The patron saint of dogs is in August. So we'll talk about... His name was Saint Rock, of all things. So we'll talk about Saint Rock when his day comes around. Saint Rock. He's the patron saint of dogs. No, it's R-O-C-H. Yeah, that kind of rock. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for St. Patrick. Thank you for St. Gertrude. Help us to love others as much as you love us. Amen. Good job. Thanks for coming up today. One of my all-time favorite sitcoms is Friends. I love this show. I cannot get enough of it. It was on for 10 years from 1994 to 2004. And in those 10 years, we followed the lives of these 10 friends who were just starting out in their careers and who quickly became a family, not just to each other, but also to the rest of us who watched them. And one of my favorite episodes in this series is when Ross decided to buy a couch. And since the store was just down the street from his apartment, he did not want to pay the delivery fee. And so he co coerced his friend Rachel to help him get it home. Well, the elevator was broken and there were sharp, sharp turns on the staircase. And so with the help of a third friend, Chandler, the three of them tried to move this love seat up the stairs to the third floor apartment. And at each turn at the stairs, you know what he said. Those of you who watch the show, you, they say that, that words or that pictures speak a thousand words, right? You can hear it, right? If you know the episode, you can hear him going, pivot, 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 at, at every turn until finally, it's hilarious because the couch gets stuck. And then the fire alarm gets accidentally pulled 
And then the couch is destroyed by the stampede of people who are evacuating the building. And now every time I hear the word pivot, this is what I see in my mind's eye. And I laugh. If I could sum up the three readings for today in, a, in one word, it would be pivot. The, all three lessons point to a change in relationship with God. Humanity was stuck. And so God announced the word pivot. And that's what we hear in Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah's listeners were going through a really tough time. The passage takes place at the very end of the exile in Babylon. The, their beloved temple, temple that had been built by Solomon had been destroyed, and so they had nowhere to worship. And many, if not all, of their holy items had been desecrated by the Babylonians. And so God speaks this word through Jeremiah, and he announces, God announces a pivot. And God says, no longer are we to do things the way that we have always done them. God is giving us a new covenant. It's going to be different. It's going to be brand new. And it will not be like the one that the Lord made with Moses and our ancestors. A covenant which, by the way, they broke, God says, because they were worshiping false gods. No, this one is going to be even better because this covenant is not going to be inscribed on stone for them to carry around in a box outside of themselves. This one is going to be carved into their hearts. This covenant is going to be on the inside and it's going to be part of who they are and they can take it with them no matter where they go so that they will always know that the Lord is their God and that they are God's people. And here it is. Here's the thing. God promises, as part of this covenant, God promises to forgive sins, to forget what we have done or not done, and to no longer hold those things against us. That's a pretty big pivot. And it points and it foreshadows even the new covenant that God is going to make through Christ. And then we read the 12 verses of Psalm 51. And if we ever need to find words to help express our desire for repentance, we need look no further than this. And it says, have mercy on me, O God. What a great way to begin. Have mercy to ask for that. Wash me thoroughly. Cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You wonder why I love snow so much? It's because of this. Because that gives me a visual reminder of how much I am loved by God and how God cleanses my sin. I am even cleaner than the brightest snow. And yeah, you are too. But that's what I think about. <laughs> that's what I think about when, when it snows. I think about this verse. And then perhaps the most well-known part of this psalm, and maybe because it's part of our liturgy that we celebrate together, create in me a clean heart, O God, or pure heart, O God, and renew a right or a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Repentance and forgiveness is also a pivot. Repentance and forgiveness is a change of behavior because it, repentance literally means to turn, to pivot. When we repent, when we have a change of heart, when we say we are sorry for what we have done or maybe for what we have not done, and we promise to not to do it again or to start doing it, then we ask God to change our attitude by giving us a clean heart, by giving us a fresh start and to set us up for success in our new way of being. 
Then there's Jesus, who announces a huge pivot <clears throat> in his plans. This is the fifth week of Lent. We know what's coming. Next week's Holy Week. And according to John's gospel, Jesus is already in Jerusalem. He's already there for the celebration of the Passover. But we'll read that part next week. There are at least two big pivots when Jesus comes to town. And the first one is what John tells us, that there are some Greeks who, who are there for the festival who want to see Jesus. Now, we don't know who they are. Chances are they are Hellenized Jews. Why else would they be there for Passover? But for whatever reason they are there, there are, they are Greeks and they want to see Jesus. And it tells us that the message of Jesus and the hope of all he is is spreading beyond the, the Jerusalem community, the Israel community, and it's going out into the whole world. But notice the importance of community here because the Greeks first find Philip. And maybe Philip doesn't know what to do, so Philip goes off and finds Andrew and the two of them then go and find Jesus. And maybe this can be a bit of a pivot for us in our highly individualized culture. People sometimes tell me that they prefer to go to church in their heart. Or that they experience God more in nature than they do in the church building. And maybe that's true. Maybe that's accurate for them. But at the same time, I get so sad when people say that to me because they miss out on the gift of community. They miss the family of faith, the body of Christ, the people who love and support one another. And we rally around a member of the body when they are hurting or sick or grieving or they have some other need. But we also come together and we celebrate the good stuff too when there's really exciting things going on, like the birth of a baby or a grandbaby or a graduation or something like that, we celebrate that too. And maybe Philip, like I said, maybe he wasn't sure what to do or where to go, and so he goes to his friend Andrew, and together they go off and they find Jesus. Because once again, where two or three are gathered, who shows up? Jesus does. And when Andrew and Philip found Jesus to tell him of these people who want to see him, Jesus was pretty unfazed by this request. And he said, the time is now here. The time is now when the Son of Man will be lifted up and he will draw all people to himself. Not just the 12 disciples and not just the women who followed him, but everyone, the whole world. The same world that God loves. And we talked about that last week. So the first pivot is a change of focus for Jesus. Because he's no longer focused exclusively on the people of Israel. Now he's thinking about how his mission is going to affect the whole world. The second pivot I noticed is a change of tense. Because up to this point, Jesus has said, my hour has not yet come. The first time we heard him say this was at the wedding at Cana when they ran out of wine. And his mother Mary wanted him to do something about it. But Jesus said, why? My hour has not yet come. And we often have heard instructions over this course of Lent where Jesus has, has done whatever it was that he did, and then he said, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone about this because his hour had not yet come. He was not yet ready to go public. But that changes today. His hour has come, and he said, my soul is troubled, or his heart is troubled. The word for soul or heart is suke. It's where we get the word psyche. So it's not the heart that's beating in your chest or the soul that's going to go to heaven. What he's talking about is his gut. He means, he means that heart. 
He means that it, he's troubled to his very bones. He's feeling the weight of what's coming and what's going to happen to him during Holy Week. And he's very upset about it because humanity has rejected him and his message about God's new way of being in the world through him. This is such a beautiful glimpse into his own humanity and his emotional state. We are made in the image of an emotional God. And that means that our emotions are not bad or sinful. And that our emotions are holy, even the sad ones. And that could be a pivot for us, because I certainly was not taught that. And that means that as Lent then pivots into Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday next week, we are invited to pivot to hope. Jesus knows what's coming, but so do we. And we understand that the Son of Man must be lifted up in order to draw all people to himself. This has to happen so that Jesus can save, can atone, can make us right with God, that so Jesus can pivot on our behalf for the last time. And so when he says from the cross, it is finished, then we all know and we all understand that it is done. And the final pivot is complete. Now, thankfully, we already know, even before we get there, we already know that the cross is not the end of the story. The disciples have been informed, but they don't understand what he's talking about. So Jesus tried to tell them at least one more time, a grain of wheat must fall to the earth and die in order to bear fruit, and quite honestly, to bear even more seeds. Well, those seeds lived on in his followers and they spread those seeds to those who followed them, and so on and so on, until now we here gathered in this room, we are the result of those seeds. God has planted seeds in us for us to scatter too, and we do. And not just in the backpack program or the ministry of the month or the food pantry or the quilts or all the hundreds of thousands of things that we do here at St. Andrews. And all of these things are tremendously important. But the seeds of God's love are also scattered in a kind word, in a polite conversation, in a hug or a handshake, or even writing a note to a friend to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. These are all ways that we can pivot. They are simple little things, and they mean, may mean nothing to us, but they may mean the world to someone else. Any time that we pivot away from our own sinfulness and our own selfishness, that gives us the opportunity to pivot toward the Lord. And when we do that, we help draw more and more people to him, because that's exactly what the friends of Jesus are supposed to do. Amen.
rising green. For he came at Easter like the risen grain. He that those those days in the grave has lain, raised from the dead. as you are able. We are God's people by baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. On this St. Patrick's Day, we thank you for the life and witness of St. Patrick and for the life and witness of St. Gertrude. Thank you for their faithfulness and for their won the wonderful examples of faithfulness that they have for us, or that they are for us, I should say. Lord, we thank you for the word pivot. It's very helpful to us to put together that repentance and pivoting are the same thing as long as we're pivoting toward you. Thank you for forgiving us, for washing us even whiter than snow. Help us, Lord. Help us to pivot away from those things that take us away from you those things that take us away from love of you and love of our neighbors. Help us to pivot toward you and them so that we may be your hands and heart and feet in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, Lord God, and we ask a blessing on every faithful heart who gathers in your name. Continue to draw us together, even as you draw all people to yourself. Draw us together so that we can serve you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray for peace in places that are broken by violence and hatred, war, injustice. We pray for the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia. We pray for the people of Israel, Gaza, Hamas, and Hezbollah. We pray for all areas of the world, Lord, that are broken today with violence and sinfulness. Melt, melt our hearts of stone, Lord God. Replace them with hearts of flesh. Give us servants' hearts that we can serve you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. We pray for all people who are hurting or suffering in any way. Continue to send moisture and in the right amounts and at the right time, especially to those of us here in the middle. We could sure use some moisture here. Bless farmers as they prepare to plant. And bless ranchers as they make plans for their flocks and herds. We pray, Lord, that you help us all work together and help us to serve you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the sick and the sad and the lonely. We pray for those who are grieving and we pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who do not know you, that they too would come to know your mercy, grace, and love. Hear now the names we lift before you who are in special need of your loving care, whether we speak those names out loud or from within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank and praise you, O God, for the ways that you use us at St. Andrews. Thank you for inviting us to be your hands and feet and heart in the world. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to place opportunities before us where we can be reaching out and sharing your grace with people who need it most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you hear us and you will answer us. For we lift these prayers to you in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill we're gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table, and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. Come, you who've been here often and you who've not been for a long time. Come, you who've tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you, but because God desires to meet you here. And for those celebrating at home, please know you are part of this table and part of this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated. Oh, no. 
fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world in the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each your love possessing. Triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us. Oh, refresh us. Traveling through this wilderness. It remains just a single grain. May the seed sown in us be made perfect in you and bless the world. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. 
Lord, Lord, we will follow you all the way to the cross. Even if it means we must go and die? Yes, yes. for it is in dying to ourselves that we find new life in you. Go in peace. Live in love because Christ first loved us. We go with willing hands, feet, and hearts, grateful to serve the Lord and neighbor while we are reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. Your face and see 